I think people get tattooed because, you know, there's not a lot of real stuff left in the world. And it's all like a 24 hour news cycle. Nothing, nothing lasts. With tattooing, it's blood, it's pain, it's permanence. You know, when you get that needle in your skin for the first time, you have to be there. You can't just call it in. You have to sit there and take the pain and then sit there and heal it. And then you gotta live with the consequences of your, of your action. Hey guys, happy Friday. Welcome to the East West Podcast with Horisumi. Today is my 50th episode and I'm super stoked. Um, it's been a bit of a journey. I've been doing these for, I think, a little over a year now, a year and change. So a bit of a milestone for me doing 50 episodes. Uh, and today I have a real special episode. Today I managed to secure an interview with prolific tattoo artist, painter, sculptor, tinkerer, artist. Um, I mean... Mike Dorsey is a, a man of many talents and very inspirational with his artwork. <clears throat> He's known for doing giant, large-scale Japanese paintings that are true both to Japanese culture and artistic taste and aesthetics, but then also adding his own little Easter eggs and cultural sort of uh, messages in them and commentary. Uh, he creates sculptures of Japanese masks and molds and uh, castings and he also creates little animatron characters that he builds himself in his laboratory. He's, um, I often refer to him as a modern day Hokusai or Kiyosai. Uh, Kiyosai was often called the demon of painting, like he was possessed. And I see Mike in the same way. And uh, we had a great conversation about his artwork and his passion, what drives him his uh, eccentric view of how he works and sleeps and gets doing what he does. So um, yeah, I think you'll enjoy it. And then at the end of it, there's links to his Instagram <clears throat> and his big cartel where you can buy some of his paintings and his artworks. And uh, yeah, it's, it's super fascinating, interesting, really interesting dude. I hope you find it as interesting as I did. So without further ado, please enjoy my interview with Mike Dorsey. Hey, good morning, Mike morning. Dorsey. How, how are you, buddy? Good, good, how are you? How are, good, good. How are things like early, I'm getting the sun in my face here, so. <laughs> nice, nice. We got the sun going the opposite way here, so it's coming yeah, where to are you. you. Where do you live? In Kentucky. Kentucky? Yeah, a little, getting little lucky small, in Kentucky. A little small town, or where are you at? Uh, we're right across from We uh, The place right now is right across from Cincinnati, but we also... Have a place we're going to in a few years. Uh, as soon as Marty retires, yeah, down in the down in the mountains. So that's going to be the uh, that's going to be the homestead from there on out. Hopefully, you know. So what about you? You're you're is it a farm, a ranch? What is it that you? Well, I'm I, at my I'm at my shop in city in in the city in Sydney. Sorry, I was trying to okay. find the right light here. Um, so I've got a studio in Sydney, right near Central Station, right downtown Sydney, Australia. Cool. Then I also I live on a farm, two hours from the shop. A big a big okay. um homestead we've got 400 acres nice uh, we run a herd of angus cattle we got horses and sheep and pigs and I, my wife I saw, a video, of you. I saw a video of you <laughs> unloading them all it looked it looked crazy man good for you that looks awesome it's more work than you thought it'd be huh that's a lot more work than i thought it would be man <laughs> <laughs> Everybody thinks a little, your farming life is simple it isn't you know so. we, we want a little 100 acre sort of hobby farm is what we were looking for yeah. Like, you know, have a couple of animals. And then we just lucked upon this giant place. And then we're like, hey, let's be farmers. And we started buying all this livestock. And that's I thought, awesome. this is a lot. <laughs> that, that's immense, man. That's that's so much acreage, you know. So we, we don't have not, anything near that much. Just three little acres. But we're we're in the middle of the Appalachians and Appalachians. Yeah. And uh, surrounded by 500,000 acres. How of do you, is it Appalachia or Appalachia? How do you say it? Appalachia. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, I listen to a lot of Appalachia music, so that's why I'm curious. Right? I yeah yeah I, we we go to a lot of bluegrass festivals and things like that. My wife and I both both love it, you know. So awesome. awesome. All right, let's let's talk about you, mate. Let's talk about you. Um, uh -oh. so how long have you been tattooing, doing tattoo art related I guess things? Since since '89, I guess what 35 years, 36 years, something like that, you know. So it's a long time. Like my um my knowledge of you, I bought a book that you made. I think your first book, full of onis. 
Yeah, yeah, that was a long time ago. I didn't, who, I didn't know who you were, and I bought this book. And for people who don't know, who you, are, you, you <laughs> for people who don't know who you are, you create these giant, large scale paintings that are just epic. Thank all you. Over, like, on and on, you just, it's like you never sleep, right? And I've heard stories that you don't actually sleep. <laughs> I, right. I do. I, sl I sleep in blocks. I sleep in very small blocks. I've heard know? this because in your, tell me your theory. I don't want to repeat what your, what your theory is, but tell me your theory. I don't know. I, you know, I don't think we're meant to sleep for eight hours at a, at a time. I think that's more for maybe commercialism, things like that, but no other animal sleeps that long. You know, I, 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 I'm for a long time, I was on a schedule where I'd be, I'd be up for five or six hours, take an hour nap and, and continue the cycle, you know? And, uh, I'm just asleep long enough for a quick dream. I wake up, I feel rested. It's the most productive sleep schedule I've ever been on. You know, um, if my, if I'm tired, I just take another nap. You know, it's really, it's very simple. You know, but uh, it, you know, I think when you sleep eight hours, it takes you a good, a good uh, hour to fully wake up. And on on this sleep schedule, I I I'm fully awake within five minutes. You know, I'm never really tired. Uh, I think I'm focused on work much more. You know. Um, but uh, but yeah, that just happened from insomnia, really. I forced myself to uh, lay down every couple hours and, and rest, and not, and then eventually rest became sleep, an hours an hours portion of sleep. And uh, it's like I said, it's it's super productive, but at the same time, it's very confusing because I don't have a giant block of sleep to break up the day, so I often have no clue what 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 day it is, things like that. This is my new studio space, but in the one previous, it was a. Uh, it was like a casino. I had bookcases over the windows. I didn't want to know what time of day it was. You know, I wanted to. So I, I literally have no clue what day it was, rarely what time it was, you know. And uh, so so that's the only downside to it. But I think, like I said, it's probably the most productive period of my life when I started doing all that. And I, I, I always get people, what people always like, oh, that's not healthy. But I've never felt better than, than when I, I'm on that schedule, you know. Yeah, so, I, I know for me, when I wake up in the morning, I have my coffee. That's my most creative. I want to go paint. Exactly. I want to go draw. I want to go work out. I want to go mm -hmm. do stuff for the first two, three hours. I feel like really energized to be creative. Sure, right? sure. And, and I, that's I've the heard, I'm, I've I'm, heard a story it's about you. That, morning for me. Yeah, that's the story I've heard that you you call you make yourself three mornings a day, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Have exactly. a little nap, and waking up and being energized, right? Yeah. And it shows yeah. in this prolific body of work that you've made. I mean, I'm astounded because I've that Oni book, you know, those are good drawings, but you've come a long way since then, man. Like, Thank you. This shit's out Thank of you. fucking control. And I'm going to put the links to your, to your art and your social media. And if you have a website, we'll put it at the end so people can go look. But I mean, you go do all the conventions. You take these giant large scale paintings with you and mm -hmm. do these big um, art exhibitions. And you seem to just paint. I mean, you do some tattooing as well, I think, but you post I your painting much more. Yeah, I, I I do a lot of tattooing actually. I I don't I don't post much much of it. You know, social media is kind of a uh, it's kind of a beast that way. You know, it 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 people it's weird. It's almost like a tattoo contest every day. You know. Um, oh yeah. It's client, a clients tend to yeah. clients tend to look at at their tattoo how it did online and compare it to other people's, and it's not it's not that way. You know, it's a very personal thing. You know, I don't think. I don't think what's people on, you know, other than me and the client, you know, because we have that relationship from tattooing it, um, but more so for them, it's what they think about it, you know. People base too much of their, their self-importance or or uh, self-reflection on social media and things like that. So I, I don't want to include my tattooing and all that, you know. Um, painting is, a, a, I, I certainly get more reaction from painting, so that, that tends to help me, but... Uh, but yeah, it's it's uh it's something I don't no, really want to delve into. You're mm -hmm. right, and that's a really good point. And I talk about this a lot as well as that, you know, a back piece that might take me or you 150 hours, 100 hours, and people see them all day and they're just like, oh, back piece, back piece, body suit, body suit, body suit, body suit, body oh, suit. Whereas sure. before, when you and I started tattooing, man, you wouldn't see that shit anywhere, right? You had yeah. to go buy a special book in Japan to sure. see three or four of those. And sure, now there's, sure. there's so much stimulation with these people on Instagram, and for kids and adults as well, that it loses its power, right? Like you said, it becomes a popularity con. People are comparing a tattoo you've done against 20, 30 other people they follow, 
oh, I like that one. I don't like that one. And I guess you're right. I mean, the sense that if you're if you're putting it out there, then people are comparing what you know the reaction they like. Oh, Mike did a tattoo for me, but I'm not getting. I only got 50 likes instead of 100 likes. Yeah, and it yeah, kind of starts yeah. fucking with their head. Did I not get a good tattoo? You know what I mean? Sure, that's a, sure. And that's a good point, right? You know? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, it's weird. I think how how things like Instagram have have uh, affected tattooing in, the, in that that aspect. That you know, I see a bodysuit. Somebody's like, I finished my first bodysuit. You know, and I'm stoked for him, even if I don't know him, because I remember that feeling like, ah, did my guy yeah. finished it? You know, just, just the amount of dedication between client and 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 tattooer to, uh, to achieve that is pretty immense. You know. Um, but they'll put that up and say they get, you know, 100 likes. But then a toaster the size of a postage stamp gets 500, you know. And I'm like, what? Oh, the, you know? line. A little straight line. The, 15, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I understand it. But and so I think Instagram's kind of taken on the role to where, I mean, uh, tattooing has taken on on, on the, uh, the role to where uh, tattooing has become the Instagram parameters. You know what I mean? Uh, th- it has to fit nicely on your social media and things like that, you know. So... So, I mean, that's, a, that's an interesting way. Look, I mean, obviously, we all use Instagram to promote ourselves. You can't. Sure. I wish, I wish you didn't have to use social media. Mm-hmm. If we're being honest. You know what I mean, yeah. I wish I could just step outside of that. But unfortunately, with a studio, with a career, you have to play that. That um, sure. In that, I'll, I'll in that turn game. it off every now and again. I like deactivate it. And if I think I'm spending too much time on there, or it's too, it's influencing things too much, or I, I tend to get confused about a lot of things uh, because of overload. I'll just I'll deactivate it for a few weeks, and people thought I died or something like that, you know. So, <laughs> so it's uh, I, I I take it in small doses, you know what I mean? That that's what I like. I've been traveling for the past uh, uh, ten days or, or or whatever, so I I hardly looked at it at all, you know, except for in the evening and, and things like that. And uh, uh, yeah. I like I like life, and I like people a lot better without social media sometimes. You know? It's true. So, it's true. But, so let's pivot a bit. When did you, how did you learn tattooing? Did you do an apprenticeship in the studio? No, no. When I started oh, tattooing, there there were only two other shops in the city. I, I'm self-taught. Yeah, uh, me too. It was, it was, it was, you know, I, I wasn't friendly with anyone in the shops around here and they weren't very friendly either, you know, but that's just how it was, you know, I was, I was, uh, was um, back, in days, right? back in the biker days. Yeah, kind of. I was more the punk rock scene kind of thing, you know, so I was just, doing bad tattoos on punk rock kids, you know? And, and, uh, yeah. I remember I got my first, it was, a I got a Puma for $75. And, uh, how I came about the $75 was, 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 uh, uh, not in a good way. So at least I turned it into something positive and I got a tattoo machine, but, uh, um, yeah, just started that way. You know I mean? I, I've had a lot of, I've had a lot of, um, uh, help from a lot of good friends along the way though. You know, a lot of people, Gave me pointers that I, I I certainly didn't deserve, you know, and um, uh, certainly got a lot of help from 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 people for sure, you know. But yeah, I'm largely self-taught, you know. I know it's not the way to go about it, but that that's the way it it, it happened, you know. Well, that's so. how it was back. I mean, I, I was a punk rock kid as well, self-taught when I was 15. Yeah. And I did some homemade machines and fucked and made some messes on my friends, and then I I put it down for a while, and then came back to it in my early 20s. Sure. Sort of took it seriously, and it's got. A, I got a job in a biker shop. To, okay. That's the only place to get a job, right? Yeah, and, and learn that way. But again, that's yeah, a rough was, way, dude. Yeah, it was a it was a it was a rough and tumble kind of place. You know what I mean? Sure, so, sure, sure. sure. Um, there wasn't. I don't think like in Canada where I'm from, there wasn't a lot of traditional apprenticeships going at the time. It was that weird era between like it was like for me it was um 93 when i started okay when I was yeah about working. the same era sure yeah same sort of era you know and there wasn't a big apprentice culture in canada do you know who crazy yeah. ace is mm-hmm. yeah so that's, yeah, were... that's well, crazy ace was my mentor right oh no shit oh that's cool right on right on but he when he left america he came back to canada and opened a bunch of shops and um yeah. i worked for him for several years okay all right Before to europe and traveling and so yeah. it was uh what brought you to Australia, though? Um, well, I, I left Canada in ninety, I think ninety seven, ninety eight. No, no, okay. I, no. I left Canada in two thousand one. So I moved all over Canada. I worked in Vancouver and Calgary and Toronto. Then I came to I came to Spain in two thousand one. And uh, there's no winters there, right? And I realized yeah. I don't really need to go back to Canada. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. So I, just I just stayed, and then 
I worked in Ibiza, I worked in Barcelona. Then I started traveling, doing guest balls all over Scandinavia, Italy. Cool. Thailand, tattooing on the beach in Thailand. Awesome. And then, uh, I just came here. One of my friends, Ian, had a connection here. And I came and did three guest spots in different cities here. And it was, you know, compared to living in Spain where I didn't speak Spanish very well. And it was people didn't have a lot of money and didn't have great taste in tattoos. Back in the early 2000s, all people wanted in Spain was little black, black tribals, right? Yeah. <laughs> so when I came here, it was like people spoke English. They got big tattoos. They had money. It was, a, it was great. So I just kept coming back here every year and doing six months here. Yeah. Um, and then I just decide to, uh, to stay here and it's, it's a cool. very hard place to immigrate to very yeah. difficult place. I didn't really start traveling outside the States until the past couple of years. You know, I traveled a lot work. I was working probably 12 or 13 conventions in the States a year, but, um, you know, I have a son and once he got old enough, um, that he, he could, he could be on his own was when me and uh, my wife, Marnie started traveling together and actually going to Europe and, and right. things like that. And I'm kind of glad I waited because, you know, I have a little bit more, a little bit more uh, mature view of things, you know. So I think uh, I think I, I can appreciate you? things better now, you know, on first exposure than I would have, you know, in my younger years and stuff like that. How old are you, Mike? How old uh, are you? I thought I was 55 till the other day my wife told me I was 53, so I actually got younger. It's awesome. <laughs> Pretty awesome. So, yeah, right. I guess we're, we're the same age then. I'm 52. I'll be 53 okay. next year. Okay, yeah. all right. How many you got? So, you got three kids? Yeah, I got three little girls, man. I started oh. late. So I got yeah. a two-year-old, a five-year-old, and an eight-year-old. Oh, yeah. Lord. Yeah, mine finally moved out. He moved a block away. You know, I'll take that baby steps, man. You know, it took, and, uh, <laughs> well, he grew He He spent half his, my wife's a children's librarian, so he spent half his life in a tattoo shop and the other half in a library. So I always say he can cuss you out in proper English, you know, but he, uh, uh, so, you know, we, 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 he's all about ball breaking because he was at the shop all day long. So once he turned 18, I, I'm like, I saw him in the hallway. I'm like, so uh, you need help, like, moving your stuff out today or, like, what's going on? You know, you're, my, my obligation to the state is over. And he told me he's going to go to college. So I'm like, okay. So he stayed, finished college and left. And it's funny, Pete, you'll probably get this, you probably have this with your kids where if you haven't met the studio, everybody's like, do you want to do tattoos, you know, to your kid? And, and my son never did. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad he didn't. I want to see him do his own thing. You know, he's much more math science driven like my wife, you know? So, um, but yeah, I, I, I I'm kind of glad he's doing his own thing and not tattooing. Yeah. My kids draw and stuff. My oldest wants to be a tattooer maybe, but we'll see if she wants to be a koala doctor too. So we'll nice, see what happens. Nice. I picked the koala doctor. So, so, now, you did most of your work in Kentucky or in that area? or you? Uh, yeah, in this area, yeah. Kentucky, you know, I, I grew up in Cincinnati, which is right on the Kentucky-Ohio um, border. So okay. uh, it's it, it, the, I'm in south in Ohio, as you could get. So we just moved over to Kentucky a couple of years ago. And, uh, you know, people were super nice. And I'm like, let's move further into Kentucky. I was wanting to move down to Tennessee. So I was like, if people are this nice down, down south, let's go further down south, you know? So it was kind of kind of amazing what three miles in a small body of water will do you know so and there's a big tattoo culture down there people want to get tattooed yeah yeah uh there's you know when we first opened we were the third shop in the city you know i think there's well over 300 people and it seems like everybody stays busy you know i don't i don't really know much of anybody really around the city except for people i've worked with um just just because of the sheer number of it and, and uh i'm kind of focused you kind of on to yourself there I do. I do. If I'm, if I'm getting ready for, you know, an art show or something, I I'll go, I'll go, I'll go three months without leaving my house, you know? So I, my wife won't buy cigarettes for me. So that's the only time I leave the house is to go get cigarettes, but literally I'll go two or three months. Um, pretty solitary person. You know, I don't, I don't venture out too much. I, 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 I'll go, I'll go to diners and stuff to eat just to people watch. I love people watching. And uh, yeah. so that that I don't I don't necessarily need to interact with them. I just need to be around people for like for like an it's hour, you know. Yeah, yeah. But but other than that, I I really I I I'm a pretty solitary person, really, you know. So so but, yeah, uh, I look at you. I've watched your career trajectory from afar, mm -hmm. and I, I I often tell people you're like a modern day Hokusai or a Kiyosai, just yeah. like this dedicated craftsman that just you know because i mean hokusai sacrificed everything for his art as sure. did kiyosai and sure. um i look at you and i watch your time-lapse paintings and 
all this little tinkering, the sculptures you make and the little moving fingers and stuff on these, yeah. uh, ro- like, know, what, what, what do you call it? Animatronic? It's not uh, robotic. Automatons. Automatons. Yeah. They're, Automatons. they're, they're precursor to, uh, to robot. I mean, to, uh, computers really. Um, I don't right. know. I think the reason, you know, I think the reason I got into all that, I, it's, I think most tattooers are this way to where we're all problem solvers. You know, we, we love to not know about something, you know? Mm. And um, uh, that's kind of why I got into it. I think I think art kind of is just a uh, series of corrections from your first line. You know what I mean? You, you do a line you're like, oh, I got to make up for that, you know. And and, and so we we are, we're continually problem solving things. And and uh, um, that, I think that that's what happened with the whole automaton thing. I, I wanted to take art to a three D level, but I realized quickly after that I need to learn how to do machining. So I got into I, I'm like, I teach myself how to use a lathe, how to use a mill, and it just becomes its own monster, you know, but I really enjoy it. Once again, it, it's 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 an incredible amount of time all by myself. And I don't like asking questions to people, especially people who who are in a trade that, that had to go through the steps to learn things. So I, I teach myself. I'm self-taught at tattooing. I, I've, tried, I've taught myself how to do a little bit of metal work I can do, and um, I think I, I learn it. I learn it better by, by learning on my own, you know. There's nothing better than after your thousandth uh, failure to finally get it right, you know. And, right. Uh, and, uh, yeah, yeah, you don't, you don't forget those stuff. For me, Tsubori is the same thing. You know, I got taught the basics by Horikashi, hmm. and then uh, and a lot of it was wrong because he was yeah. just learning as well. So he'd been a machine yeah. artist for what, 15, 20 years, and he had just started learning Tsubori just a little bit before me. So the needle technology he gave me was not great. So I, once I had the basics, so it spent me, it's taken me, I've been doing it for six years now. It's taken me probably four years to get my needles right, where yeah. I'm happy with the outcome. Gotcha. And then same with you, I wanted to start making my own tools. So I started making them out of bamboo. And then I started making them out of metal now. So I bought a mill and a lathe and self-taught myself how to machine aluminum and steel to make tools. So you're right, it is a problem solving thing. I never thought of it that way before, but. I like making all my own stuff, sure. you know, well, so I make my- some, something else from our generation now, you know, it's, it's, I, I think we, at that time, you know, we didn't have all supply companies that we have now. So it was a lot yeah. of big borrowing steel from other things, you know, ink caps are just glorified hydraulic caps, you know, so you had exactly. to find you you had buy to, them at the gas fitting place. <laughs> sure. Sure. And, and I think there's a certain magic to, uh, to, uh, creating a tattoo from its base ingredients we made the needles we made the pigments in some cases we were able to make make our own machines and there's there yep. there's a bit of magic that i think has been lost totally. with the evolution of, of tattoo companies and and things along those lines where you know everything's ready readily packaged and, and handed to you so there, there there's that there's that weird sense of pride you get when you're like i actually built everything to make this tattoo you know all the stuff yep. nobody saw behind the scenes that that you, yeah. you 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 sweated about and got flux in your eye and pigment in your ear and well, stuff st- like I that. I still make my own ink. I still make my own ink. I still make That's all awesome. my own tabori needles. That's and, awesome. Uh, yeah, you're right. It's all that behind the scenes stuff. Like you said, I take pride in the fact that I make all that stuff, and it's this good feeling because you know I still laugh when I see when I see guys pulling out bottles of stencil stuff. You know that they, they bought for twenty yeah. bucks for a bottle. I'm, Fucking use dental, dude. It costs nothing. Oh. <laughs> You you speed stick, dude. You know I I I. Uh... I the other day, I had no stencil stuff at my farm studio. I had no no dead all at my farm studio. I forgot it, and I was I went and got my fucking old spice stick and was using that. Right? Nice, nice. It works like yeah. a dream, dude. It uh totally. It yeah, actually works better than metal. It does. It, every time I smell I smell a men and speed stick, I still think of my very first tattoo because that's how it was put on. You know, that's how it was but, back in the day. Dude. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> But uh, it, yeah, I I don't know. I remember when I I some I used a pre-made needle for the first time, and I'm like, this kind of doesn't work very good, you know. And the person I borrowed it from, she's like, she's like, ah, it takes a while to get used to them. I'm like, does it take you a while to get used to them, or a while to forget what good needles work like? Which one is it, you know? So it's uh, right. it, it's it's a catch twenty two, you know. Nobody's got time to make their own needles, but they'll sit on Instagram for four hours a day. You know what I'm saying? So. Whatever, whatever. I'm not gonna judge. I'm not gonna judge. Yeah, no, that's, that's a fucking good point, dude. Everyone's like, "Oh, the flux smell, the flux smell." Fuck. Why oh, you smoke cigarettes, dude? Yeah, right. Fuck the flux. Yeah, right. Yeah, totally. I'm no health nut. That's for fucking sure. So, oh, I'm a bit of a mix, man. Like I, I love nicotine. I love caffeine. 
you know? Sure. But I try, yeah. I try to eat well to offset that, right? <laughs> Everybody's always sending me all this, like, how to quit smoking and stuff. Like, I want to quit. I'm like, when did I ever say I want to quit, man? I still enjoy it, you know? So, sure, it'll kill me, but I'm making an informed decision. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, uh, I don't know. I have my own place for, like, 23 years, you know? I, I was a horrible businessman, Ken. I have no place owning a shop. But I managed to keep it open for 23 years and, uh, uh, Finally, I just, my son graduated in, in uh, high school and, and um, wanted to move on to something else. So I went to go, I g literally gave that to some friends who weren't happy with where they were working. And uh, I just took my machines and or some artwork and was like, here you go, you know, and left. And I uh, uh, went and worked with Corey uh, Flatmo for a few years and then just decided to travel. So, and then COVID hit and locked us all back down. And, and uh, so now it's finally opened back up and we're, we're we're back to traveling a bit, but there's places I tattoo at here in town. I got I got some um, I got some really good friends that that uh you know, uh, ex extend the offer for me to to work out of their places. You know, it's it's kind of like where's Waldo though. You know, because my my appointments never know where I'm at. You know, like okay, where are we gonna be at today? You know, it's almost like gotta draw a map. Like this is where we're gonna be. You gotta find me. But it's cool. I mean, you've earned that. You've been it, a long fucking not. It's it's very I I try to keep things loose anymore, dude. It's like um, I when I when I have appointments, I really don't give times really, you know, which which makes a lot of a lot of tattooers crazy. I'm like just be there early afternoon or whatever, you know. So somebody once told me a tattoo works best when everybody uh, is willing to and can be there, you know. And I I I I think that's true, you know. I don't like to make a lot of plans because nothing can go wrong if you don't have plans. It makes my wife crazy when we travel because. I, I, I don't even like booking hotel rooms beforehand. I'm like, ah, we'll figure it out as we go, you know? And uh, it makes her nuts. Cause she's You're well crazy, dude. Oh, dude, it I'm does. Just... She, she's gotten better about it over the years. But uh, but she, um, uh, yeah, I, I my life is very loose anymore. I don't really stress on a whole lot. I, I It takes a lot to really get me mad. I just kind of roll with things. And if I'm not into it, I don't roll with it, you know? So I don't know. we can all learn a little bit of that, dude. <laughs> yeah yeah i i got tired of getting mad about things really i think what it came down to i'm not sure yeah. i mean look i but, i got a, a big shop here i got you know at any point in time i got 10 or 15 artists here wow and, wow that's it yeah, yeah it started off smaller than i expanded and it just kind of grew yeah and everybody uh, good core group though yeah 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 i got a good core group. i've been i've been here 10 years this year and so i've mm -hmm. cycled through a few different crews and uh, when I first opened the shop, you know, I was like, this is my tattoo family and people would work for me and I would treat them like my brothers and I would do everything for them. Sure. And then when they'd fuck me over or they'd go work somewhere else, I used to, used to cut me, you know, I used to, used to take it real personal and it would, yeah. it would set me, you know? Yeah. And so I had to learn how to let go of that and just let people be people sure. and, uh, a little, sure. a little less control and a little less fucks given. I, so I now think I think I'm in a. I think when people leave the shop, you know, we, we do take it personally, take it personally, but it's kind of like you're breaking up with a girlfriend, you know, you go through the same yeah. stages where, you know, at first you're like, it's cool, it's cool, but then a week later, you're like, dude, fuck that, like, what the hell, and then like, three weeks after they're gone, you're like, I kind of miss them, you know, <laughs> and then a year <laughs> after that, you're, you're like, you're, you're, you see them out, you're like, hey, what's up, you know, give them a hug or whatever, but yeah, I, <laughs> I think once I realized that, you know, everybody's not on the same path I am was when I, I learned to be okay with it, you know? It's That's like, the thing. So, yeah. Exactly yeah. Right. And, and you, you, you can't take it personally. I think three years tops is normally the most you work with somebody. I think after that, you kind of, you sapped everything art, uh, to a healthy point, you know? You sapped yeah. everything artistically off each other as you can. And, and you, you've heard their stories 20 times, even though you act like you heard it for the first time five minutes ago, you know? So... Um, but no, I, I think a, I think a rotation of people is uh, is important. You know, I think it keeps a, a shop uh, keeps a shop fresh. You know, so I don't see know. now we've just got. But when I opened here, it was very. I mean, I'm sure you've heard the stories of Australia and the the biker culture here that controls everything. Yeah, and that. Um, so when I opened this, it just they had just changed the whole system here. They made it illegal to be a tattooer if you were a criminal, right? Okay. So if you had any criminal record, you can't get a tattoo. They brought a tattoo licensing scheme in, right? Really? And so, oh, dude, it's wild, right? So to be a tattooer here, I got to get fingerprinted and get a six-month background check by the by the federal authorities, right? 
Wow. And uh, it's wild. Yeah. And check it out. So my tattoo license, no hygiene check, no qualification, no nothing, no artistic nothing. It's just I'm not a criminal. I'm not a biker. Right? Huh. I, and so the, yeah, when I opened this place, uh, they, were still, they were still getting the bikers kind of out. So that's why I'm in the third floor of a warehouse cameras everywhere because there was a lot of shops getting extorted and burnt down and that kind of thing here right so all the big shops in the city here are all in warehouses right you, you see very few very few street shops like one or two right okay but in the last 10 years since that's all gotten all the criminal element out now there's shops sprouting up everywhere hundreds hmm. of shops and tattooers so, were for that what when it when it all went into legislation or i mean like i was never i'm i'm comp i'm I don't know what the word for it is. I'm completely anti-regulation, right? Uh, I'm same. all about same. And I, I, you know, fuck the regulation. And we've got these tattoo groups here in Australia that lobby the government for more regulation, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know the shit in Europe with the pigments, right? Yeah. Where they're trying to ban all the inks. Mm -hmm. well, we had uh, people here that were talking to the government trying to get them to stop allowing tattoo ink to be sold on eBay, right? Because there was yeah. those were bad inks. So the government took that advice and went, oh, maybe we should look at this. And then they tried to ban all the fucking inks because they're all mm -hmm. dangerous. Mm -hmm. right? So that's why you should never talk to the government. You don't ever call the police and you don't talk to the government. <laughs> they're sure, not your sure. friends. I remember when when they started passing regulations here, you know, I, 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 was, I was against it for sure. Because I knew, you know, that they, they don't have your best interest in mind. They, 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 no. got, they got your money in mind. That's for damn sure. You know, but money in mind and control. Right. Yeah, exactly, and 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 you know, it, it's eventually going to lead to who 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 says who can be a tattooer and who can't, you know, and uh, uh, that 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 that's a slippery slope to go down too, you know, and and so eventually it's going to lead to these tattoo schools, you know, because they're gonna they're gonna look to how were you trained and things like that, and and a, a traditional apprenticeship will you know will will no longer be 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 uh, acceptable, yeah, we're you know. So. We're in that sort of period now where there's no tattoo schools here really to speak of, but the regulations, I mean, now they've just changed the law again two months ago that in my state to be a tattooer, you have to be a citizen or a permanent resident. So a lot okay. of people come here to do like student visas or working holiday visas for a year or two. Mm -hmm. They can no longer tattoo full time. You can wow. get a little short temporary license, but mm -hmm. you can't get a permanent license anymore. So it's very... Mm -hmm. um. It's very controlled here, right? Yeah. Which well, isn't great. You know, I got, I, I kind of got no place. I mean, I, I'm not exactly on the up and up tattooing where I am, you know? Um, so I'm kind of. That's how it should uh, be, dude. Uh, yeah. That's I, how it should you know, be. I don't, I don't want to say any more than that. I'm going to leave it there. But no, it's. Uh, <laughs> that's why I, I don't post photos of uh, in my other place. You know what I mean? It's uh, Sure, sure, sure. It, it's uh, it's kind of weird, you know, that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't see anything good coming from inviting the government into into into, into tattooing, but you know it, it is where it is. You know, there's nothing I can do about it. So yeah, uh, that's the thing. Right? That's the thing. I, I fought. I fought. I, you know, I I I I I was against it from the beginning, and and it's going the way that that I was kind of saying it was going. You know, people people bitch about the tattoo schools, but I don't think you can. And and I might get myself in trouble by saying this, but. I don't think you can you can be for regulation and against tattoo schools because that's that's going to be the end fucking result whether you like it or not. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Once, but you know th that's just my opinion. We'll see if it comes true. You know. But no, um, no, that's that's absolutely true. Right? I'm I'm all about you know we grew up in that sort of punk rock anarchy kind of time where the cream yeah. rises to the top and you know you, you deal sure, with things. Sure. Right? Yeah. You know? I, do you go back to Canada to tattoo still? What what are the regulations like up there? I have no idea, dude. I know that the uh, the woke culture has taken over tattooing in Canada. Okay. It's, uh, we have a Canadian girl working here now, and she was telling me that it's it's crazy there, right? Like yeah. The, 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 the vegan woke culture, and, like, you can't tell. You know, if someone comes in who's got darker skin, you're like, hey, man, maybe don't get yellows and oranges because it won't really show up too good, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Apparently, if you say that stuff to customers in Canada, you're called a racist, right? Like it's yeah. it's crazy over there. So you got to be really careful how you phrase things and how you speak. And it's not the Canada that I left. You know, what I mean, it's not. Yeah. It's 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 all these young yeah. people idea these ideas and stuff. And you know, yeah. I mean, like I, you, you know, the, 
just want to give people good tattoos, right? With good advice. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Can Canada hasn't let me in since I was 21. So, you know, oh, really? they, oh yeah, they, they hold a grudge. So I'm, I'm not allowed <laughs> to go back. I'm not allowed to go Why? back to Canada for, for being such oh. nice people. They sure hold a goddamn grudge, but it's been, it's been over 20 years and they still won't let me across the border. But have you come to uh, Australia before? No, you know, I was close. I was in Thailand uh, a couple uh, last week. I'm still still trying to adjust to the time change. I, normally, I'm I'm awesome with you know adjusting that, but for some reason, going to Thailand has kicked my ass since since I gotten back. You know, but uh, I didn't realize I was as close as I was to Australia. There were a lot of Australians there. You know, I love Australian tattooing, and um, uh, but no, I haven't been there. Literally on the other side of the world. You know, so the flight, the flight to Thailand killed me. That was 29, 27 hours one way and 32 on the way back, you know. So and with my wife, uh, she she likes to go and she can't get any more than like a week off, you know. So yeah, our time there is very limited, especially for the amount, amount of hours, you know, days it takes to fly there. So, well, hey, man, if you're always welcome in Australia, dude, if you ever want to come visit, man. Oh, awesome. Thank you, man. I'd love to come see. I, I, I met you in uh, in Paris one time at that convention for breakfast, and uh, we just talked for, for a little bit, but I've been following your work for a long time, and, and I watched the uh, the podcast with Alex the other day. That was really good. Uh, yeah, he's a good dude. Man. I like Alex a lot, dude. He's, Alex, uh... he's good people. It, it was a good conversation to listen to, but yeah, I've got your your podcast, I mean, your, your, your uh, live feeds and stuff like that. That's one thing that you know, with the 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 lockdown and all that stuff, everybody was everybody had a, had a, a <laughs> podcast or you know live feed, and that was kind of cool. God, that was about the only good thing that came out of that. You know, was was a uh, sitting around listening to everybody bullshit swap stories and 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 the aftermath from all that. You know, and uh, uh, I hope that starts back up again because it was a good exchange. I think it was a healthy exchange. You know, so so. Let's get back. What's what's your? I mean, obviously, all your tattoo work is Japanese based. Uh -huh. All your stuff is is on cultural Japanese artwork and so. So, what's sure. your what's your connection to Japan? I mean, what what nothing got really, you? Nothing really. I you know I remember it was probably ninety three something like that. Remember the book, the Japanese tattoo uh, that came oh, out yeah. like in the late eighties. The big one. I went. The big form. I went. I went and saw a gallery thing of those photos, and at the time I was just doing, you know, random American tattoos, and uh, I went and saw it, and the photos were huge. I think they were actually Polaroids, but they were, right. they were, they were, were Polaroid. yep. yeah, yeah, they were immense, man. And I remember standing in front of it, and then, and just the 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 power of the size of the photograph and and how strong that the imagery was. I really wanted to learn more about it. I didn't understand it, you know. Once again, the the uh the curiosity problem solving uh, i gotta know what this is about you know and and um so i i started like delving more into it and and, and realizing it was all based on ukiyo-e and 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 the stories behind that because i love folklore i've always loved folklore and um uh the uh the uh lost stories kind of thing really always intrigues me you know another reason i, I love inventor stories i love illustrating inventor stories you know storytelling in general and uh, uh, so that that kind of just led me down the path to 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 want to learn more and more, you know, just the beauty of it, the way it seemed to age and settle, and uh, uh, it was it was very different, you know, from from what I was used to as far as because we had Easy Rider magazine and stuff like that, you know, and you had to go to the porno section to buy that. So you're standing with a bunch of creeps, like you know, trying to trying to get a tattoo magazine when you're 17 years old or whatever, you know, but. But yeah, that 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 just kicked it off for me, you know. And uh, I just want to learn more. And uh, eventually worked into into painting and things. I I didn't really start painting until later on, you know, when I started doing uh, one really wanted to do Eastern style tattooing. I I I would do paintings of of things and put them up in the shops just to show clients what 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 I wanted to do, what could be done, you know. And yep. I also painted tattoos because it seemed like it made the process faster of tattooing because that was always a very important thing early on, like how fast are you, you know, how fast can you do this or that, you know. And and um, uh, so I started painting things to, to make the process go quicker. There was no guesswork. I did, we didn't have to discuss much. Everything was very laid out on paper. And uh, uh, so eventually over time, the painting just kind of 
got into storytelling and kind of took on its own beast to, to where it is now, you know? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's been a, it's been a, a weird trip to where things are in my life right now compared to where it started, you know? Um, Have you spent time in Japan? Hmm? Have you spent time in Japan? Have you been to Japan? No, I've tried to go a number of times, and every time I do, there's been some catastrophic catastrophic or, or, or crazy life experience. First time I was going to go... Uh, after it was confirmed where I was going to work and, and stay for three months, I found out I was going to be a dad and he was going to be due right in the middle of that, you know? And my wife was like, just go for a month and a half and you'll have a month and a half. But she had a really difficult pregnancy. So I was like, I was like, don't forget, I'm not going to go. Next time I was going to go, my, my house and my yard flooded. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, I can't. I, I can't. Is that when I your can't. koi fish got loose that time? Uh, yeah, I found them like yards over. It was it was a big yeah. ordeal. My whole house. Video. <laughs> was destroyed man so i don't know i'm afraid to make plans to go back to japan because something horrible is gonna fucking happen to me dude so <laughs> i get killed next time i don't know but uh but no i i uh it, it's on my it's on my to-do list we were on our way back from uh taiwan and i was gonna try and just stay for a few days and uh, uh our flights got all messed up and i'm like screw it i'll just go back home and, and plan a proper trip. Cause I was just gonna, you know, jump, jump off the flight and, and catch another flight back, you know, cause we had a layover mm -hmm. there, but, uh, but no, no, I, I haven't. I, I, I just, like I said, I just started traveling really, you know, so I haven't really yeah. been too many places over that way, except for Thailand, Taiwan and Nepal, you know? So I think, I think Japan have put the spin on it, man. Cause I mean, cause you're so focused on this Japanese stuff that, you know, in our cultures, we have to search it out and find it and look at books. But when you go to Japan, you know, and you're just walking around the old areas, there's the Oni masks on all the buildings and the temples, or maybe there's a Tengu temple that's just all te Tengu masks and statues inside. It's sure. just such a part of their culture, the stuff that we look at and revere and search out and try to replicate yeah. in our artwork. It's just everywhere there. I mean, koi sure. fish everywhere. It's, it's a magical fucking place, right? Sure. You know, and you can see how the Japanese artists have the sort of a leg up on us because they've oh, yeah. grown up with this stuff their whole lives, right? Sure. Yeah, people, I, I'll get people asking me, like, you know, learning this and that, and I'm like, I don't know. It's kind of like asking a friend what you've been up to for the past 1,500 years, you know? So that that's kind of what it's like for for me trying to figure out, you know, what the meanings of, of, of things are yeah. and, and, and the proper yeah. way to do things, you know? So especially from the distance I mean, I'm at. These these masks that you make, these oni masks that you sculpt, and uh, you're casting some as well. Was that right? Yeah, yeah, I was doing that for a little bit. It was, it just, just, I, I I never made. Uh, I I got into I I got into trying to sculpt for a little bit because I it kind of rewired my brain for me a little bit. You know, when you think about something in two D like we do with tattooing and painting so much, it kind of it 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 shocks everything in your head when you got to actually produce it in a 3d form you know so i i i love trying trying new things and and learning how to do things so i had to learn how to mold and <clears throat> what what kind of uh of things to sculpt in and things like that so i, I try and i try and stay busy i really i want to learn everything honestly you know i i can't just i i can't just learn one little thing i'm like i want to know everything about it when i got into oil painting i'm like I want to get into oil painting and just, you know, I want to scrub, you know, scrub paintings in because I was so used to how strict tattooing was. Dude, a week and a half later, I'm making my own oil paint. I'm fucking, uh, I was, at one point I was boiling white lead paint in, in linseed oil to make this medium. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, I'm boiling <laughs> lead. Like, what the hell? You know, that's how obsessed I, I get on things. I, I awesome. It's mystery of not knowing. that That's what it is. I, I keep saying we're problem solvers. We want to know how things are done, you know, um, what makes, what, 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 what makes this magical thing happen, you know? So it's awesome. I, though, dude. I love that. I, it needs to be more people like that. More people like you. I think you know, most that, tattooers are like that though, whether they know it or not. I think, I think it's something that, that, that the, uh, mindset of, of tattooers are drawn to. We, we love to learn that, you know, it's always, it's a treasure hunt of things, you know, that's why people collect old machines and, and old yeah. flash and things like that. It's, it's well, the hard part to find it. Which is why I got, it's why I got totally obsessed on 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 this metalworking stuff, dude. Because I got into like I wasn't doing big gears; I was doing little tiny stuff. So I got into watchmakers' lays, and and you know these lays are 
a hundred plus years old. So you got to find a cullet for it. And, and it was the eBay hunt for like all the shit that you wanted and you're bargaining with other people. And it, dude, it's it, a ridiculous amount of money for things I could probably I'll only use once, but I'm like, dude, I gotta fucking have that, you know? And, and, and meanwhile, I'm selling my soul to, to, to buy this part off fucking eBay and, yeah, it, it, I, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm OCD. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that's awesome, dude. I love that. I mean, I think that's what a lot of tattooers miss out on now. The, the ones that use the fucking plug and play wands and the battery packs and they don't know the struggle and, the, yeah. and they move, they miss out. They miss out. <laughs> on the, they miss out on the journey to get there. Sure. You know I, mean? I, I held, I held a, I held a tattoo pen for the first time last weekend. It felt weird, dude. I don't know. Yeah, I, I've don't had do people, it, bro. Don't I, do it. You know, I, I, I no, I, I, it, 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 you know, I've spent so long trying to learn how to use a, a relay machine that I'm like, wow, that'd be starting all over again, dude. You know, it's like I've always wanted to learn how to do tabori and stuff, but once again, it, it, it'd be like starting all over. You know, I'd want to do it the proper way. You know, get a proper, get an apprenticeship and and serve that role. You know, to learn. Um, I, that's something I, I revere. I wouldn't want to teach myself. You know, just, just, just out of respect for it but uh uh because i i am i'm more mature and see things a little differently now than i did when i first started tattooing you know i was a 18 year old little shit so uh, but now now, yeah. now that i understand the the uh the things behind it you know i i, w I would treat it differently today for sure for sure yeah i mean like with, with tabori you can't teach yourself i mean no i watched i've seen online. people do that. What's up? I said I've seen people try and do it for sure. They try. They don't succeed yeah. because it's very sure. fucking difficult. You need to be taught. Yeah. Mostly yeah. about the needle technology, right? If the yeah. needles aren't right, it just doesn't work. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. the thing. You need to be taught. It's like mm -hmm. like I one of the things that I talk about frequently is you might have heard me talk about is how pre made needles are what changed tattooing. When people didn't mm -hmm. have to make their own needles and any anybody, any John or Susie could just go buy package needles put them in a tube in a machine that could start tattooing mm -hmm. before that I remember these before 2000 you had to make your own needles right and that was yeah. the that was the the siphon through which all tattooers had to go through was have someone teach them how to make needles right sure sure well yeah it, it, it's you know it, it, that's nothing that that kind of trips me on it's like remember like how, it, just how tattooing views things according to, to what they want to use like Remember when everybody used stainless steel tubes or, or even when people reused needles forever ago, uh, yeah. you know, that was filthy. And then reusing tubes, you know, you screw up and you set your ultrasonic and you, you autoplay and that was too dirty. Right. So everybody went to plastic I, tubes. I, I, and yeah. now, now with, now with the wands, it's okay to just wrap, wrap your, your grip with a with piece of plastic pork. and that's good. Now I'm like, wait a minute, a tube was dirty 20, you know, 10 years ago when it was actually yeah. autoclaved and, in a tested audit play, but now it's okay to just wrap it with barrier film. Like, okay, I, yeah. I, I can't keep up, but <laughs> whatever works for you, I don't care. Yeah, but, I still uh, I still use metal tubes. I won't, yeah. Dude, the way the, they uh, feed is amazing. You know, I, I've yet to find a plastic tube that 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 absorbs vibration and you know that I guess that that's a that's a whole nother beast, you know. But um you use uh, coil yeah. machines still? I do, I do. Yeah. Uh, Nothing fancy, not fancy. Ass. Um, like I said, I'm I'm self-taught, so I'm sure I do a lot of things backwards, you know. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I love a metal tube. I love a coil machine, and I'm not I'm not part of the whole loyal to the coil tribe, you know. There there's some road regular regular rotaries that I'll use every now and again if I if I'm using like a large. Have you tried the Dan Cubans? You tried the Cubans? Hmm? I have. have you you know, it, it's funny. I, I borrow some machines. Like um, I'll borrow. I like other people's machines. Is what I always say. Like I'll borrow okay. somebody's machine. Like this is the shit, dude. And I'm like, this is awesome. I'm gonna get one. And I'll go get one. And I'm like, eh, it's not as good. You know, I I don't know what I did wrong. And so I'll borrow somebody else's. After I get rid of that, I'm like, dude, this is amazing. And, and it's a horrible cycle I've gone through for 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 twenty years. You know, so. But I, I used to when that Swiss rotary first came out. I used that for like a year exclusively, and I thought, you know, I was working, I was working quicker and and more efficiently, and uh, I'm like, I'm gonna go back to a relay machine and see if my uh, 
see if my hand cramps up, you know, like it did when you first started tattooing. And I was working on black and gray tattoo, and I'm like, first couple of scoops in, I'm like, dude, I've been tricking myself. Like, it wasn't easier, you know, it wasn't more efficient. You know, that I that that give of a tattoo machine, I mean, of a relay machine, uh, uh, I missed that magic to it, you know. I, like, uh, I, I was totally, totally brain-fucking myself, you know, by, by telling myself that this is better, you know. We're all looking for that magic machine that'll, you know, get you more efficient, yeah. get Get, get 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 it in there better but i don't know i have no problem by using anything there's you know like people say there's there's a million ways to put a to put a nail in you know just different tool well, it's like you said that problem solving thing you're always looking for the better way right so you the magic way yeah 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 the glass is always greener on the other machine perhaps right exactly exactly yeah yeah so are are, are so are you, are you planning on uh with your shop are you gonna are are you planning on on retiring with that or or you know that oh. that's nothing it's like what what are people what are people's it would seem like at a time when everybody everybody's getting more artists opening more shops i i kind of went the other way i got rid of my shop and kind of i've, yeah. I've kind of streamlined i've kind of streamlined my life in, into uh as simple terms as i possibly can get it you know i i, I live two different lives right now i live 3 days in the city sleep on the floor of the shop on an air mattress mm -hmm. and then I live the other four days at my farm with my wife and kids gotcha. so my head's in two different places all the time and i've been doing this for two years now and it's okay it's pretty fucking tiring man yeah. um you know so my thursdays and my saturdays are my long days that i drive and yeah. those days are write-offs and then you know okay. sunday i'm getting cooked after the three days of tattooing and so i don't know what the long-term plan is we'll see yeah we'll see what happens i mean you know, I you know I'd like I, to be closer to home, obviously. <laughs> I I thought I'd be dead by forty two. So by the time I turned forty three, like ever since <laughs> I was like ten years old, I'm like forty two, dude. That's the cutoff point, you know. When I turned forty three, <laughs> I was pissed. I'm like, I got nothing planned, dude. Like, what if I actually live to retirement? What the fuck am I gonna do? And uh, uh, I yeah, I like I said before, I don't make many plans anymore. Whatever happens, happens, you know. So that that's kind of been my motto ever since I didn't die, you know. So that that fell through. I'm like crap, I'm still fucking alive. What's, but, what's your retirement? <laughs> Are you just gonna keep painting and tattooing? And yeah, I enjoy working, dude. I, I it's kind of my obsession, you know. It's what I do from the moment I wake up until it's what until I go to sleep, you know. My, I have, my what, 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 that's just what I wanted to ask you. What is your what drives this obsession and this passion that you have to, to live this, to do what you do? That's the big question I wanted the whole podcast to be about. Uh, what is it, your driving fucking, what is it that makes you, you? I, you know, I, 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 I don't know. It's, it's part obsession with things, you know, I, uh, you know, I learned from one painting or learn from one tattoo it makes me want to do the other, you know, and I, I don't hold on to what I did before, you know, as far as, paintings and and things like that i i kind of i don't hoard really you know i i, I kind of yeah yeah i i i i i'll put a bunch up at once because i hate going to the post office more than goddamn anything dealing with those motherfuckers but um i i uh i just kind of learn from it and move on so i'm excited to do the next thing from what i learned from the, the last tattoo or the, or the the last uh uh, painting but but I, I i do do more painting than tattooing right now i still tattoo quite often but um like i said it's it's more of a solitary thing you know with a the tattoo there's so many variables uh that affect it that one thing i enjoy about painting is that the only person responsible if it fails is me you know what i mean so i can't blame that on anyone else you know you, you always see people show you a tattoo like ah oh, you know this they didn't take care of this or that, you know, I can't do that. I, it, 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 <laughs> if the painting fails, it's because of me. And, uh, I, I, uh, yeah, I like the, I like, I like, I like learning from things. I like building on that. And I don't know what, what, what my end goal I plan on getting to, but I hope I never find it. Cause I really enjoy, you know, picking things apart. Now I've gotten really into, into uh storytelling, which I think was what initially drove me to, uh, woodblock prints and stuff these outlandish stories and and what symbolism meant what and i'm trying to apply that to to uh things going on today you know and i like and you, making your paintings have a japanese theme with sort of a mod sometimes a modern thing thrown in there yeah 
Yeah, I, I try and make a little commentary. I like to try and make people laugh too, you know. So I try and I, I slip a lot of things in that go unnoticed, you know. That uh, which, which, which is correct. cool. I like that it goes unnoticed. But um, um, I, uh, I yeah, I, I like I like I like people watching. Like I said, so a lot of my a lot of my paintings are from things I I see or directions I see I see society going in. And, uh, you know, good or bad or whatever. And, you know, I'm indifferent to it. I, I just like to reflect that in what I'm doing, you know. So, uh, but at the same time, I love learning new mediums. So I try and try and uh, apply that, you know. So. Yeah, no, I mean, look, it's uh, it's incredible what you do, dude. It really is. Thank you, man. I'm Thank gonna, you. I appreciate I'm gonna it. Put all the, uh, I'm going to put all the links to your stuff at the end of the podcast. People go check it out. And, okay. uh, are you going to do a book of your art at any point in time? Have you been have you been cataloging it and photographing I, I, it and stuff? You know, I did one a few years ago um, with Mickey Violetto, um, but I, I don't think I'm going to I'm going to do another. You know, I think I might have done that a little too prematurely, possibly. Um, but uh, but I'm happy with everything that that was in it. It was a fun process. It was interesting to to see how a book was put in, was put together. But uh, yeah. but not. I, I just want to live painting to painting, you know. I don't want to concentrate on yeah. that big of a project again, you know. And like I said, just trying to keep yeah. things simple, no plans. So that's great. And if people want to buy your paintings, they can just reach out to you. Do you have a big cartel or something, or what do you? Sure, how do you sure. sell? Yeah, I'm a big cartel. Uh, off my Instagram is is the best way. I, I I've been doing a lot of shows, so I wouldn't. I which I don't like doing. I don't, I mean, I like doing shows, but at the same time, it's building up to them is, is, you know, putting everything out in front of your peers, all these people that you've looked up to for your whole career yeah. is kind of terrifying to me. So doing shows, you know, is, is it, it really, it scares the bejeebas out of me every time. But, uh, but yeah, but drives- now that, now I don't plan on doing many from here on out, you know, I kind of am done with that. So from here on out, it's just, you know, I'll paint it and put it up my big cartel and, and you know. If it gets a home, it gets a home. I'm happy about that. So, yeah, cool, man. Cool. Right it's been great talking with you, buddy. We've done an hour almost. So, hey, thanks for your time. It's been awesome, dude. It's been good to get to know you. Good to hear your with story. You. What motivates you? We could all use a little bit more motivation and inspiration, you know? Oh, thank so. you, man. Thank you. Love your work. And uh, hopefully, I'll make it to Australia one day. And, and uh, You're always welcome here, bro. You can work here. You can stay on the farm with your wife. I have a second house on the farm. So, nice. you're always welcome to come visit and hang out. and. We can do some shooting and some uh, some drinking. I'm down with that. <laughs> awesome. All right, buddy. All right. Thanks, brother. Take care. We'll I talk will, soon. Uh, we'll talk soon, buddy. Cheers, buddy.